Hello everyone, welcome to the 13th lecture of this video series and today we will learn about Carnot cycle. This is related to the second law of thermodynamics. So let us start with that. So So, what does the second law of thermodynamics state? It states that not all heat energy can be converted into work in a cyclic process. So, let me write it. It states that not all heat energy can be converted into work in a cyclic process. Another similar statement of the second law of thermodynamics is that we cannot transfer heat from a colder Reserver to a hotter one without doing any external work. Now, as you know, that heat flows from a hot body to a cold one. So, this law just states that it is not possible to do the heat transfer in the opposite direction without the help of external work. So, this is the second law of thermodynamics and from it arises the concept of heat engines. So, what are heat engines. So, a heat engine is basically a machine which can convert heat to work. So, it converts the thermal energy available in the form of heat to mechanical work. So, what does an heat engine look like? It looks like this. So, there is an reservoir. So, this is reservoir H and L, where H represents hot and L represents low. So, this is hot temperature and this is low 
temperature so a machine or heat engine takes heat q1 from the hot reservoir and gives back q2 heat to the colder one and the rest of energy is converted into work so work done is w equal to q1 minus q2 so here we have introduced a new term which is heat reservoir so let me quickly define that also so it is an in finitely large source of thermal energy at constant temperature and here infinitely large refers to the fact that there is infinite amount of thermal energy so if you essentially take q1 amount of heat from the reservoir it will not change the temperature of the reservoir at all so this here let us say that the water reservoir is at temperature t1 and the colder one is at temperature t2 where t1 is greater than t2 okay so this is a heat engine okay now that we have defined a heat engine we need to talk about the efficiency of a heat engine so this is a machine which converts thermal energy to external work and now we are trying to know how efficiently it can do that so the efficiency is given by eta which is equal to work done by heat intake so this is basically representative of the amount of heat taken which is converted into external work done so in compliance with our previous heat engine diagram this will be equal to w over q1 or q1 minus q2 by q1 so eta is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 so this is an important formula and let me the box around it okay so these things you guys might have learned not might you guys have actually learned in 12th standard but this is a good time to refresh the consciousness so we have learned the second law of thermodynamics we have defined what is a heat engine and how we can define the efficiency of a heat engine now let us define Carnot cycle so what is Carnot cycle so this is a theoretical cyclic process proposed by Sadi Carnot which can be proved to have 
the highest amount of efficiency this is a sorry i made a spelling mistake here theoretical thermodynamics cycle which was proposed by Sadiq or not which has the highest which has the highest efficiency this is compared to other cycles even the heat intake is same for all cycles and and engine undergoing a Carnot cycle is called a Carnot engine. So these are just definitions. Now let us go to the actual interesting part where we will see how the Carnot cycle looks like. Okay, so stages of Carnot cycle. So we will basically draw the PV diagram for this cycle. Okay. So this is P and this is V. So the Carnot cycle has four stages. The first one is a reversible isothermal expansion of the gas this isothermal expansion occurs at the temperature of the water reservoir so this occurs at what temperature T1 so what it will look like in the PV diagram this will be an isotherm so let us say this is point 0.1 with T1 
v1 and this is point 2 with v2 v2 so this is the isotherm at constant temperature t1 so that is the first step and what is the second step then this is reversible adiabatic expansion of the gas again first part was isothermal the second part is adiabatic expansion so in this case the heat transferred is 0 here dq is not equal to 0 but here it is 0 so the temperature will change and in the pv diagram let me make some corrections here so in the pv diagram this will be like this which is an adiabatic curve so here let us call it 0.3 which is at pressure e3 v3 and the temperature here is t2 so during this reversible adiabatic expansion the gas goes from temperature t1 to t2 where t2 is the temperature of the colder reservoir so t1 is greater than t2 okay so in the diagram let me put the arrows okay now then this was the second process so in the third stage the system will go through and reversible isothermal compression so this will occur at a constant temperature t2 so in this case the system will go from v3 v3 to v4 v4 and as this is a compression v4 has to be less than v3 right okay so what it will look like in the pv diagram let me draw it so 
this will look like this where this is an isotherm let me put the direction also okay so this is in this direction at state 4 where pressure is P4 and volume is V4 and this is at constant temperature T2. Okay, so that was the third stage and in the fourth stage the system will go through an reversible adiabatic compression. So here also the Q will be zero and it will enable the system to go from state four to state one so what does that mean that means that the pressure volume and temperature from P4, P4, T2 will go to P1, P1 and T1. So the most important thing here is that temperature will increase from T2 to T1. As we know, T1 is greater than T2. And how it's going to look in this diagram here? It will be an adiabatic curve and the direction will be like that. So this is a clockwise direction and this is the representation of our kind of cycle in PV diagram. The first stage is to go from state 1 to state 2 where this is an isothermal expansion. So the system will intake some heat here. Let's say it to be P1. The next is the adiabatic expansion where the system goes from state 2 to state 3 and there the heat intake will be zero next it is an isothermal compression from state 3 to state 4 so here system will throw out some heat let's say amount q2 and in the last stage the system will go from state 4 to state 1 the initial state and Again, in that case, the heat taken or heat transferred is zero. So now that we have defined what a current cycle is, our goal is to calculate the efficiency of a Carnot engine. So how it can be done? It can be done by calculating the W by Q1 factor where this is the work done and this is the heat 
taken and if you see the PV diagram you will see that in one cycle the system starts from state 1 and again it goes back to state 1 so in this case du is 0 or internal energy change is 0 over one complete cycle so what will be the work done in this case the work done as we know will be the area under the curve so let me just quickly make a mock-up diagram so if this is the PV diagram of a kernel cycle and this is the cycle then the work done will be very under the curve of this shape so area under the curve okay so we will calculate the work done next but we will not calculate the end of the curve directly rather we will calculate the work done in all the individual stages so we will calculate the work done in the isothermal expansion then adaptive expansion then isothermal compression and then adaptive compression so here the direction of the arrow i look wrongly so this will be in this direction so the total work done let us call it w or delta w that is let us call this delta w so the total work done delta w will be w1 plus w2 plus w3 plus w4 where wi is the work done in ith stage okay let us just call this w okay so we calculate the work done in each stages so w1 first this is an isothermal expansion so the work done in this case w1 will be nrt ln vf over vy these things the work done for isothermal and adiabatic process we have already done in lecture 9 or 10 in one of those i have to check which lecture it is let me just quickly check Yeah, so it was lecture 9 actually. So here in this video, I will not derive those again. You can just refer to lecture 9 for the little derivations. I will here just use the formulas. So here what is V1? Sorry, what is VI? VI is actually V1 and VF is V2. So W1 is equal to NRT ln v2 by v1 okay so w2 will be an adiabatic expansion from v2 v2 
टू थ्री 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 सो वट विल बी दर्क डन इन दिस केस दिस विल बी नथिंग बट फी थ्री फी थ्री माइनस फी टू फी टू बाय एंड अगेन हियर आई हैव नॉट मेंशन एक्सप्लिसिटली बट आर इज द गैस कांस्टेंट एन इज द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स एंड टी इज द एब्सोल्यूट टेंपरेचर ओके सो दिस इज द वर्क डन डब्ल्यू टू एंड देन what will be the work done w3 which is an isothermal compression where the system go from p3 p3 to p4 p4 so again here w3 will be in our t2 ln p4 by v3 okay so here i have forgotten here the temperature was t1 and lastly what will be the work done w4 which is an a diabetic compression where the system goes from before before to p1 p1 so here w4 will be p1 p1 minus p4 p4 so then w will be the sum of all these four terms W one plus W two plus W three plus W four, which will give us in our T one ln V two by V one plus V three V three minus V two V two by plus in our T two ln p4 by p3 plus p1 p1 minus p4 p4 by so this is the final form but to understand the essence and importance of kano cycle we need to simplify this so we will start by rewriting the expression of the work done during the adiabatic processes so for example w2 we have obtained as p3 v3 minus p2 v2 over 1 minus comma but we know that this can again be written as nr delta t by as we discussed in lecture number 9 and here delta t is nothing but t2 minus t1 as the system goes from temperature t1 to t2 similarly w4 which is equal to p1 v1 minus p4 p4 will be equal to nr delta 
e prime let's say divided by 1 minus comma where delta e prime is nothing but equal to p1 minus p2 because in this process the system goes from temperature t2 to t1 so we will see that w2 plus w4 which is equal to nr t2 minus t1 over 1 minus comma plus nr t1 minus t2 over 1 minus gamma these two terms will cancel out and give us 0 so essentially w will be equal to w1 plus w3 which is nr t1 ln v2 over v1 plus nr T2 ln V4 over V3. So this is a already much simplified form. So now we also need to define U1 where P1 is the heat intake during stage 1. Now we know that the stage 1 is isothermal process. So for ideal gases, du is going to be 0 as Stage 1 is an isothermal process. So, E is constant and Pt is equal to 0. So, for ideal gases, we will obtain D equal to 0. So, P1 equal to Pu plus W1, which is the first law of thermodynamics from the stage 1 part, will give us P1 equal to W1. So, now with Q1 also defined, which is equal to nr T1 ln P2 over V1. We can easily define the efficiency as W over P1, which can be written as W1 plus W2 over W1, which is equal to 1 plus W2 by W1. So, this is the form of the efficiency. So, to write it in terms of volume and temperatures, we can do that by n equal to 1 plus W2 is nr P2 ln V4 by V3 by nr T1 ln V2 by V1. So this NR terms will cancel out and this will give 1 plus T2 over T1 times ln V4 by V3 divided by ln V2 by v1 so let us see if we can do any more simplification again now we will 
use the expression for a diabetic processes which is p to the power 1 minus comma is constant this is not something new we have problems where we have used this formula so this is for a diabetic process so the second process which is an a diabetic expansion that will give us t1 p2 to the power 1 minus gamma is equal to t2 p3 to the power 1 minus gamma and uh, fourth one which is an a diabetic compression that will give us t2 v4 to the power 1 minus comma is equal to t1 t1 to the power 1 minus gamma so let us denote this as equation A and equation B. So, we can see that T1 by T2 from equation A, it becomes P3 by P2 equal to the power 1 minus gamma and from equation P, it becomes V4 by V1 equal to the power 1 minus gamma. Or we can rewrite it as V4 over V3 the power 1 minus gamma is equal to v1 over v2 to the power 1 minus gamma this basically implies that v4 by v3 is equal to v1 by v2 so we have eta equal to 1 plus t2 by t1 this formula ln v4 by v3 divided by ln v2 by v1 Now we can use this equation here and write v4 by v3 as ln v1 by v2 divided by ln v2 by v1. So this will again be nothing but 1 minus t2 by t1 times ln v2 by v1 divided by ln v2 by v1. So, these terms will cancel out and we will obtain that eta is equal to 1 minus t2 minus t1. So, 
this is the final result in the most simplified form of the efficiency of an engine going Carnot cycle okay and another thing we also know that eta is 1 minus q2 by q1 this is from here just from the definition of the efficiency of heat engine so comparing these two equations we see that q2 by t2 is equal to q1 by t1 so this is another important result okay so now we have completed our discussion on Carnot cycle again this is a very simple topic but this doesn't hurt to revise us some basic things and in the next video we will solve some problems with Carnot cycles so for this video I think it is okay to conclude it here okay so bye for today